Hello and welcome to the next episode in the War of Forex Quickfire tutorial series. In this episode, we're going over ground combat once again and revisiting the subject, going over order of battle screen as well as formation template design and a few other things about uh, ground combat uh, in terms of the mechanics and how things work. So, we went over in the last uh, ground combat video unit class design. Formation templates um, and all of that good stuff, but I did forget to touch up on that. You can change the rank. Um, I think you basically did forget to touch up on the fact that I didn't go over each individual thing accordingly, and so I'm going to go for a more comprehensive view on that entire thing. So I'm basically going to be remaking my ground design video here. Um, so let's get right into it. So in ground design, you're going to have your base unit types. This can go from infantry, light vehicles, medium vehicles, heavy vehicles, super heavy, ultra heavy, um, and static. And they each have their own characteristics. Size, so in tons and transport tons. Hit points, slots, hit modification, max fortification, max self fortification, and, and uh, more. And this will tell you what each will give base. You then have component types you can add to these designs. So if we click infantry, we get a certain selection. If we get light vehicle, we get a certain selection. If we get medium vehicle, we get a certain selection. You can research more of these selections in the ground combat tab over here. So you can then put on a whatever design you want, and they will add it to this screen over here, which is a collection of what the compo or the, what the element. This is an element that you are making will look like. If you if it's a bigger vehicle, like a medium vehicle, you can add a second uh, component to it. Each component has its own attributes uh, and they each do their own thing. So the all these just do normal um, size, AP, damage, shots, GSP. So uh, abbreviation, but it's obviously size and transport tons, how what well that size affects onto the uh, medium vehicle. So if we if we have 12, now we have another 12 here, so 24, and then that means that we have 42 uh, in terms of transport size over here. Um, AP is uh, armor, yeah, armor piercing, so our armor penetration. So how easy it is to penetrate the armor of your opponent, and you every uh, armor you get is based on the armor type from here. So. Uh, for a medium vehicle, for example, uh, like medium vehicle in this armor, it's got 32 armor. And so it makes it easier to penetrate. Uh, that's a very simplified version of it. Damage, the amount of damage it will do to the opponent. Um, so hit points, 32 hit points, so it will do 30. Uh, how many shots it has, and then the supply it will take up. You then have stuff like, and, and this will go down accordingly, you have stuff like forward fire direction. Uh, which uh, is a certain amount of size, and this will allow up to uh, six fighters or one uh, ship to provide direct support to the uh, formation the element is attached to that uses a forward fire direction. Headquarters, you can change it from over here, 1,000, 10,000, whatever, and, this, and the headquarters will include the formation above it, uh, or the formation that it's a part of, and everything below it. Um, and you need to make bigger headquarters if you want to create a hierarchy. Um, this will allow you to put officers in p this position that will effectively give them bonuses. You can put officers already on formations without headquarters, and you can operate formations without headquarters, but you will not be able to effectively give their bonus um, when they are assigned if you don't have a headquarters. Construction equipment, geoserving, xenoarchaeology, those all work in their own independent way, and you can go and see my video on those subjects uh, that should be early, it should be ground uh, geological survey and xeno archaeology. You can also create surface to orbit weapons. Uh, surface to orbit weapons are based off the ship weapons you have designed. There are no missile design weapons. And they will use your racial sensor, racial fire control, uh, and the weapon you are clicking on. And if it is a turreted weapon, you will be able to design it as point defense, which will give it. Uh, four times less range, but four times more tracking speed. Um, and if it's not, then you'll be able to do this. They are very powerful, and they cost a lot and pretty big, uh, depending on the weapon. 
um, and you want them to be on the avoid combat. Avoid combat, which I'm going to go over, basically means that um, the formation is less likely to be attacked um, during ground combat. So that means you want your STOs, you want your fire forward direction, you want your headquarters to not to be on avoid combat because you don't want your headquarters dying. You don't want your forward fire direction dying because they're not doing actual damage to the opponent. Same with surface orbit weapons, same with xenoarchaeology, same with geology. All right. Armor. How armor works is based off your racials. So uh, base AR is 1, and then you times it by your racial, and you get 8. Times it by, um, by your racial, you get 16. So 2 times that, and then 3 times will be 24, etc, etc. Racial weapon strength is, is calculated accordingly as well, um, in terms of the damage it does. So racial weapon, 10 damage on the crude anti-personnel. Uh, 30 on this and it modifies that accordingly um so if we have a look at 10 damage um so that's the base that the, these weapons will do but then they're modified by the racial um so yeah they're modified accordingly um and then we have racial tracking and racial fire control so that is how all that works um, and also with the different, they have different levels of armor, medium vehicle armor, static armor, etc. Then we have capabilities. You can research capabilities such as boarding, and you can add them to the vehicle or to the or to the inventory. Boarding can only be used for infantry, um, and it will show. And these will increase the cost by uh, quite a bit, but they will give you uh, bonuses in fighting in extreme temperature combat, extreme pressure combat, um, and the like. Um, they will also um, allow you to, to basically specialize your forces um, wherever you want to go, and they can really, really improve the ability and uh, how well you do. Um, something that I want to go over as well is uh, max fortification and max self fortification. So, max fortification is what is required, what you get after having construction vehicles after a certain amount of time, fortify that formation, and then they just need a construction. Uh, vehicles in any formation near them and they will uh, essentially uh, use that max fortification level and it's modified further by the planet they're on so if it's a mountain jungle or jungle mountain that'll be times three so i'll have 18 max fortification level for example so infantry and static are very good at fortifying hit modification chance is the chance that they will be hit uh, and then um how many slots they have and then hit points self explanatory okay um, over here you can do STO targeting, so weapons per target, and then you can also select what kind of targeting uh, they will use, and you can assign it once you've got STOs there. Over here we've got formation templates. Uh, you can, I'm going to go over this, so you can, your formations will appear over here. You can rename the formation, you can obsolete formation, you can show obsolete, you can show civilian formations, because civilians make their own ground formations for garrison. You can create a new formation and name it what you want and name it abbreviation and then you can select here and you can add units. You've got changes to any green text you can change, so 20, whatever. And I'll add it to here and then um, you can edit the amount by clicking here, edit amount. You can delete an element, delete, you can rename the template, you can change the rank of the uh, specified formation. Uh, and you can also look at the template as text for AARs and other things, and you can delete template here. This is basically what you'll be building in your ground construction facilities, um, and you can see what size they ultimately be, their cost, the amount of HP, the, the logistics, and the units. Every single formation has uh, 80 hours worth of supplies on their own, so do keep that in mind, um, and that's how logistics work. Something I need to also touch on is in terms of logistics, Infantry logistics only apply to that formation they're a part of, while vehicle logistics apply to all uh, formations that are above or below them. So keep that in mind. And when you talk about above and below, I'm talking about hierarchies in terms of like battalion, uh, brigade, uh, division, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, next is going to be order of battle. So this is where you actually like see your active unit location. Uh, field position, so this is the location they're at, uh, this is the field position they're at, and, that, and I'll go over that in a bit. Show civilians, so we can have a look at civilians, um, 
where they are, for example. Uh, show elements, so you can see the elements in each. Show support, show which is supporting, amount pop up, etc. So, um, next is you can rename each of these. You can put field position. Field positions basically affect how round combat units work together in terms of um, if you're on frontline attack, you won't be able to get fortification level and you'll be uh, attacking the enemy formation. You can attack any part of the, of the enemy formation based on dice rolling, of course. Frontline defense, you get formations, but you can only attack the first layer of the enemy. Support, you can put them in support and they will put, uh, directly provide supporting action, but only certain weapons like medium uh, bombardment, uh, heavy bombardment and long range bombardment will be able to use these. And rear echelon, there'll be point of rear echelon, so they're less likely to be attacked but only long bombardment and a few other things can be used from this. And you can have a few more buttons there. Clear hierarchy. You can clear the, the hierarchy of the formation. Uh, clear support. It clears the support of the formation. So you can um, support a formation directly like this. So just drag and drop. And that will tell this combat engineer company to support this combat engineer company. I can clear that support and that will be clear. I can... Um, Delete formation, I can transfer aliens, so transfer to another alien. I can put actives on, uh, which is for STOs. Formation medal, I can give a formation a medal, I can give hierarchy medal. Uh, I can change rank um, of the formation, and I can see total force tech. Over here, you can put cost size, units, name, type, size, in terms of what you want to be formatting this by. This will give a summary. And that is the general workings of the order of battle. Um, every formation that is on the same planet will fight in uh will fight enemy formations uh, every uh eight hours. So keep that in mind. Um, now I made a video separately on step by step combat more, but this is just the overall mechanic. Um, and this was just going over various things. Now another thing that I'm going to talk about is reserve. Um. So, well, not reserves, but healing. So, in current um, Aurora 4X C Sharp, you cannot replenish forces automatically. You cannot heal forces in ground construction facilities. You need to build new formations and slot the new formations into the old ones. So, this is where the uh, show elements and amount pop up button is really important because um, what I can essentially do. Is I can you can drag and drop these out of the formation, okay? So if I if I want to drop ninety army riflemen into here, I can drop ninety army riflemen, and um, this will drop ninety into here, and I'll do one one eighty. But if I do a mount pop up, I can then drop it in here and specify I want ninety added to that, and I'll add ninety riflemen, and you can change which formation has what accordingly. So you want a reserve formations to be able to support your main formations by adding in those extra elements as logistics vehicles are consumed and more now there's a lot of things i haven't covered in this video i haven't gone over the specifics of how ground combat works in terms of the rules or how certain things are detailedly defined so what i'm gonna do is in the description, I'm going to link a table of contents for the change list so you can go on ground combat and have a look yourself. But this is just the introductory of how things work together, what each button does, and what you're going to be looking at in terms of reserves and moving things around, unit class design, things like that. I hope you have enjoyed. Please remember to like and subscribe. There's only about 20% of people who watch these videos. Actually, subscribe. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.